And it's also about how Prahlad deals with his anger. So as we're reading, you'll probably find out who you relate more to, Prahlad or Hiranyakashipu, whose, whose nature you identify with more. So you can, you can be aware of that because you're going to hear about both of them and how they're relating to one another back and forth. What Hiranyakashipu is saying, how Prahlad takes it, how he responds, how Hiranyakashipu responds. And so it's an interesting conversation because normally we wouldn't identify with Hiranyakashipu, right? We think, oh, he's, he's this big demoniac person. I don't identify with him, but um, I'm just asking, you can think about uh, some of the qualities of Hiranyakashipu that you might identify with, possibly. Anyway, don't think it's not possible. There's a little Hiranyakashipu in all of us until we become purified. Some of us, there's a big Hiranyakashipu. Hare Krishna. Shnubhadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shamiti Namini Namaste Shari Shati Deve Gauravani Vichari Ne Nirisaya Sasmi Bari Prashtaya Dasatari Radha Madhava Kijai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Govijana Balava Giri Varadha Jeradha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Jeradha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Gopi Janabalava Giri Varadhari Kupi Janabalava Giri Varadhari Jasodanandana Pajajana Ranjana Jasodanandana Pajajana Ranjana Jasodanandana Pajajana Ranjana Jasodanandana Pajajana Ranjana Chamana Tira Panachari Chamana Tira Panachari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jay Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Kupitana Balaba Giri Varadhari Kupitana Balaba Giri Varadhari Jishodhanandana Jana Ranjana 
Jashoda Nanana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tiranachari Jamuna Tiranachari Radha Marava Kunjabi Hari Ji Radha Marava Kunjabi Hari Shri Radha Madhava Ki Jai Gantaraj Simad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Thai Gopamanani Hari Hari Bo So we're going to begin reading and I will be going through the Bhagavatam describing, paraphrasing what's going on. This is the seventh canto, eighth chapter. Uh, this chapter uh, this chapter is entitled Rani Kashipu, Slayer of the Demons. No, no, that's not the title. Excuse me for one second. Just closing some documents that take up valuable resources, which is why you see me freezing all the time with my high resolution camera and low internet speed. Living out in the country. There's not enough of us, enough of us living out here to make it worthwhile for them to speed up the internet at this point. Okay, so this chapter is titled Lord Nishingadev Slays the King of Demons. Simad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto, Chapter 8. So we left off on Monday with Prahlad Maharaj instructing his friends. We gave them basically second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, if you remember, right? Basically, right? Basically, the second chapter of the Gita. And this chapter begins by uh, stating that all his friends liked what he said and accepted what he said. So that, of course, is good for them and problematic in a sense for Pallad Maharaj because it just disrupted the whole school. And so what happens is his teachers come in, they figure out what's going on and uh, they're all up at arms and so they go to Hiranyakashipu and say you know your son is preaching about our enemy Vishnu and when Hiranyakashipu hears this he becomes enraged he becomes enraged angry ah! he becomes so angry he said he becomes like a serpent and we understand that serpents sometimes bite for no reason, it's just their nature. And so generally, parents do not kill their children. That, that's even the, these you know, great dictators who kill millions of people, they spare their children. They love their children, they just kill other people. Here, Hiranyakashipu is killing his own child, which is inconceivably demoniac and inconceivably gross, savage. So, he, I don't know if you've ever been angry before like this, but when we become angry, we lose all sense of right and wrong. Um, he said, not only was he mad like a snake, he was hissing like a snake. A snake. And, so he started chastising his son. And basically saying that you've gone against me. You're preaching against me, you've gone against me. And so today you will get a one-way ticket, you'll get a free ride to Yamaraj's planet. That's basically what he told him. And he's saying, I've got control of the whole universe. So like, there's nothing you can do now. It's too late. If, 
if I'm angry with someone and I want to kill them, nothing can save them. At least that's what he thought. He will find out that's not true. But the nature of the atheistic demoniac mentality is there's no God and we can create our own power. Uh, we don't we don't need to believe in a God. We're powerful. We'll, we'll do everything ourselves. We'll solve all problems ourselves. So you have this vision here, right? You get this vision here. You have Hiranyakasipu, this huge, powerful, extremely powerful demon, hissing like a serpent, telling Prahlad Maharaj, I'm going to kill you. So you might think, well, what would the average child do? Um, tremble in fear, run, get out of there as fast as they can. It's not what Prahlad did. Prahlad started speaking to his father and saying, no, you think you're strong, but everybody gets their strength from the same person. Whether it's you or Lord Brahma, they all get them from the Supreme Lord. That was not something that made Hiranyakashipu happy to hear because he thinks that he's the Supreme. So he doesn't want to hear about Vishnu. Um, so now Prahlad Maharaj goes on glorifying Vishnu. It was like, that's why Hiranyakashipu is angry because he's siding with the enemy Vishnu. And now he goes, you know, you know what it's like when you hate somebody and somebody glorifies them? Have you ever been in a situation like that? Like that's that's like intolerable, isn't it? Like like you don't like a political candidate and people are glorifying him. And you think this political candidate is, candidate is a horrible person. The worst of the worst of the worst. And people are saying he's the best of the best of the best. Can drive you crazy. And how can they say that? What's wrong with him? You become angry. That ever happened to you? You become angry at somebody, you know? And the people also who love that political candidate, who the other person hates, they become angry when they hear him put down. So, Hiranyakashipu is getting really fired up right now, fired up with anger and Prahlad. <laughs> what Prahlad is saying is making him more and more angry. And so now, Prahlad is going on and glorifying Krishna, describing, you know, he's the controller. And uh, you should give up your demoniac mentality and um, you know, you should become Krishna conscious. You shouldn't think that I'm your enemy and you should worship Vishnu and you should see everyone equally. Now, that's an interesting thing to say to someone who's about to kill you, isn't it? It's almost like you could look at this like, you know, it almost sounds like a unbelievable, like, a, like it's a comedy, like, you know, you're being killed and you're saying things, you know, I don't think you should kill me. You should see that I'm just like everybody else. You should. It's like a tiger about to eat you. You know, you should become vegetarian. You know, it's healthy. It's better for your health and better for your consciousness. It's like that. It's not going to work. But anyway, Prahlad is a devotee. So it's his duty to try to help his father. His father may not want the help but it's his duty to try to help him. And as we discussed on Monday, Prahlad's fearless. So here's another example of his fearlessness. <clears throat> yes? He's, uh, he's about to get killed, and he's given his father a Bhagavatam class. And he's think maybe he's thinking, this could be my last Bhagavatam class, but, you know, whatever. This is what we do. We hear and chant. You know, what happens to a lot of us, when life gets difficult, we stop hearing and chanting. Oh, it's too difficult, I can't. I can't think of Krishna, I'm just so upset, I'm so angry, I'm so frustrated, I stop chanting my rounds. You know how every month I get a letter like that. Oh, this happened, that happened, I'm so upset, I stop chanting. I thought the letter was going to read like this. This happened, that had I'm so upset, I'm chanting 64 rounds. I said, but it ends, I'm not chanting any rounds. So it's like, I don't understand. 
how did how did you come to that conclusion? So um, we have a good example here, Prahlad Maharaj, on the verge of death, about to be devoured by the most powerful and demoniac person who's ever existed in the history of the universe. And he's like, Om Namo Bhagavate Bhasudevaya. My dear father, you should not see anyone as an enemy. What to speak of me, actually, you should just worship Vishnu. And that's the whole reason he's angry, and Prahlad knows that, but this is the duty. Everyone, pay attention to this. When you're in difficulty, what are you supposed to do? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Hear and chant the Bhagavatam, not stop chanting and take shelter of pizza and ice cream. I don't know. Like, where's your, where, where is shelter? Oh, I was so disturbed I couldn't chant. Well, what did you do? Where'd you find your shelter if you didn't chant? Right? Where's your shelter? Where, where do you, where's your go-to for shelter? Oh, I just went on Netflix. I was so upset. Yeah. All right. Great. What verse is that? I haven't read that verse. Is that the ninth chapter of the Gita when things are difficult, you turn on Netflix? I didn't see that verse. So that, that is a um, good example to pay attention to here, what Prahlad Maharaj is doing. So then he tells his father, he says, basically, you're an idiot. Why? Because you think you're so powerful. You think, you know, you ever have a really nasty kid? You think you're so powerful. You can't even control your senses. You know, some, I mean, Prahlad was not like that, but philosophically, that's what he was saying. You think you're big stuff. You can't even control your senses. You think you control the universe. So this is, a, of course, a principle. The greatest, you know, people are trying to control, become powerful, wealthy, successful. Greatest power is to control your senses. But that's basically what Prahlad is saying. If we were make it, if we were to make it a comedy, he would say something like, "Hey, big boy, you're nobody because you have enemies in all directions." That's your senses and your mind. So you think you conquered your enemies. They're all over the place. Everywhere you go, you there they'll be there. And Hirani Kashipu, he didn't like that, as you can imagine. He said, okay, okay, rascal. Um, you think you know what you're talking about? We'll see. It's time for you to stop talking. And the way I will stop you from talking uh, is kill you. Then you won't be able to talk this nonsense anymore. Um, and you're telling me that I should surrender to your God, your Krishna, and now I'm about to kill you. So where is he? <laughs> your God's so great, where is he? You, because Prahlad was saying, he's everywhere. Previously he was saying he's everywhere. So, so Hiranyakashipu was saying, wow, Anu Radha, can you mute? Thank you. Um, so previously he was saying, Krishna's everywhere. And Harani Kashibu says, okay, he's everywhere. So if he's everywhere, why isn't he here now? I'm, I'm about to kill you. So you remember the story. Is he in the floor? Yes. Is he in the door? Yes. Is he in the pillar? Yes. And then... <clears throat> Insider secret was that Prahlad Maharaj, Premanjana Charita Bhakti Vilochanena, Lord Brahma says that when you have Prema, you see Krishna everywhere. 
in everything and everybody. So like if I say, Talia, is Krishna everywhere? You'll say, yes, he's everywhere. It doesn't mean you're seeing him everywhere. It's just that you know that from Bhagavad Gita. You know that as a theory. But when Irani Kashibu said, so is your Krishna in the pillar, Prahlad was not quoting a verse from Gita. He was seeing Lord Nishingana. He was like, yeah, he's in the pillar. Yeah, he's right there, you know. Surprise, surprise. He saw him. That's the Mahabhagavat. Mm -hmm. They see Krishna everywhere. Hmm. So then Hiranyakashipu says, you're speaking nonsense. I'll chop your head off. And now let's see what your God's going to do. A lot of people think this way, you know. Like um, husband, <coughs> husband or a father, mother think, I'm the projector, the boss thinks. I'm maintaining you. Hmm. Maybe as a subsequent subsequent cause, but not the primary maintainer. Not possible. Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. So you remember before before Hiranyakashipu trying to kill Prahlad, it didn't work. So now, as far as I understand, this is the second attempt. So now he's going to personally try to do it. Pulls out his sword and he's going to try to chop his head off. But first, he was so angry. When Prahlad Mar said, yes, he's in the pillar. Hiranyakashipu was Furious, he he completely lost control. When Prahlad said, "Yes, he's in the pillar," Ranyakashipu says, "Here with his struck his fist against the column, took up his sword. One, I guess, in one hand, he's in the pillar. Ah! Well, he's strong, you know. So he knows karate, jujitsu. You know, smash things." That's what he did. I had a friend who had um, anger issues. And one time I was at his house. And in America, the way the houses are built, I have to give to, to explain the story, I have to tell you how the houses are built. You take two by fours and you make a frame. You could put bricks on the outside or nothing or some kind of siding. Then the inside of the house, you have a frame and you put what's called sheetrock, which is a board made of compressed chalk. That's what the walls are. Like if you look at my walls, it's just compressed chalk boards like this thick. And then behind it is insulation and two by fours. And then outside there's some wood. So it's just a big frame. And then there's a metal roof. So chalk, it's thick chalk, but if you, you know, if I take a hammer and hit the wall, it's going to make a little indentation and you'll see a little white from the chalk. I don't, I don't know if you Plus can one, see it. Eight, six, six, three, two. It's too hard to see. But anyway, that's what it is. So I was at my friend's house once and he showed me some indentations on the wall. He said, you know what that is? He said, the other night I got really angry and I smashed the wall. Ah! <laughs> Have you ever been that angry that you'd smash a wall? That ever happened? Yeah. I don't know if it's a male thing only or Tanya says it's a Croatian thing. Yeah. Okay. Male or female. You have to be ready for anything in Croatia, right? Because if you don't smash them, they smash you. Anyway, we've all been angry at some point where we just like threw something on the ground or cursed to the sky or like that. 
So that's how angry he was, but he's so powerful. So him punching a pillar is kind of like my friend, 16 year old friend punching the wall. I was so angry. Know, his parents made him stay home or something. That's what he did. And you know what comes next, right? Mm. So out of the pillar, the first thing is a sound that no one has ever heard before. That completely frightens everybody. Hiranyakashipu and all his cohorts, everybody hears a sound. You know, you can't even, I can't make the sound, obviously. You know, you ever hear a sound like a car backfires and you think it's like a cannon just shot and, you know, <clears throat> you think somebody's, you know, the, the enemy is attacking and they're, you know, you don't know what it is. Or... So, you know, multiply that by like a million. It probably sounded like the, the end of the universe or something. Everybody was shaking. <clears throat> and these guys are big, you know, they're big, powerful people and they were shaking, so it must have been loud. Okay. Um. Hmm. So, now, here's another interesting point. Hmm. Prahlad's saying, yes, Krishna's in the pillar. So, now, to hold true to his devotee's words, he's actually got to come out in some form. So when Lord Nishringadev comes out of the pillar, that's called Stana Nishringa. That's like the most angry form of Lord Nishringadev. That's the form in Mayapur, like this. Rah. If you hold your hands like this and chant, Nishringa, Jai Nishringa, Jai Nishringa, Jai Nishringa, you'll get some Nishringa Shakti. Because that's how Nishringa is holding his hands. Nishringa Dev, Nishringa Dev, Nishringa Dev, Nishringa Dev. You do that. This Brahmin told us to do it for five or ten minutes. Nishringa Dev, Nishringa Dev, Nishringa Dev. Anyway. It's called Stanu Nishringa. And then Vira Nishringa is when he's thrown on his lap. And Jvala Nishringa is when he's torn apart. Surgery begins. You know, first, first, he comes into the operating room. Then he puts her on the on the operating table of his lap, and then he does the operation. It's, so there's three. If you go to Bahovalam, there's nine forms in the Shringa, and there's one, I think there's one place that has all three of those forms. And one temple, I think, may have three of those forms. I'm not sure, but anyway, those are three of the nine forms that you'll find there. There's happy in the Shringa, there's peaceful in the Shringa, but Generally, we understand <clears throat> Lord Nishringadev is a personification of Krishna's anger. And Lord Nishringadev is always angry. The one devotee wanted to worship Lord Nishringadev. Prabhupada said, no, he's always angry. It's dangerous. You can't worship him. No, but Prabhupada, I want to worship him. I found this deity of Lord Nishringadev. I want to worship him. Prabhupada said, okay. You put... Uh, <laughs> Operation successful, patient dead, exactly. So he said, Prabhupada said, well, if you want to worship Lord Nishingadev, then have a deity of Lord Chaitanya, because then you will like, come Lord Nishingadev, Lord Nishingadev will take on the mood of Lord Chaitanya. So if you're going to worship Lord Nishingadev, then you should have Lord Chaitanya there, because he's always angry. So Mayapur, it's Stana Nishinga. And if you know the story, the they went to a sculptor and said, please sculpt him. He said, no, I never would sculpt this. It's too dangerous, you know. Because when you're dealing with someone that angry, as Lord Nishingadev, which is like the personification of all anger that exists, if he takes the anger against you, it could be difficult. But anyway, he had a dream, and after about a year, he said, okay, I'll do it. And after he finished, he took a little vacation, and he, the deity was in a shed, and the shed burned down. And I believe the neighbors called him and said, come back, your shed's on fire. And then he called Mayapur and said, Nishingadev wants to leave. He's burning down everything. So get him to Mayapur, and Lord Chaitanya will be there. 
he'll calm down. So anyway, so here, Lord Nishingadeva now, he is angry when, and you remember the story of Jagai and Madhai, how angry Lord Chaitanya was? He came with his Sudarshan chakra he was going to kill. I think it was Madhai, wasn't it? I keep forgetting who was first, who was who surrendered and who didn't. But I think it was Madhai who didn't surrender. And so Mahaprabhu was so angry because his devotee had been offended. So when Krishna's devotee is offended, Krishna becomes angry and he comes to protect him. And so all the anger that you could muster up in the universe is now coming out of this pillar against poor little old Hiranyakashipu, who, whose minutes are now numbered. The operation is soon to begin. Mm. Mm. So, Lord Shingadev comes out with his human body and the lion head and Hiranyakashipu is like, what? What's going on here? He couldn't figure it out. Never seen before, right? Nada Hari. Nada means man. Hari means God. Half man, half God, or half man, half lion. Uh, so now Hiranyakashipu is looking at this form. He's studying it. His tongue looks like a razor. His teeth super sharp, his face is fearful, his mane is shining, his eyes are angry, his gaping mouth and nostrils. <sighs> you know, lions are pretty angry. His jaws were open. He was so big, his body touched the sky. Anyway, it was scary say the least. You remember, and you remember after he killed Hiranyakashipu, he was still angry. Ah, nobody could pacify him. Only Prahlad could pacify him. So angry, so ferocious. So at that point, Hiranyakashipu understood this must be Vishnu and he's coming to kill me. And he's thinking, but nobody can kill me. What a fool. This is the thinking of materialists. Uh, I'll create a medicine, I'll live forever. I'll get an operation, I'll, you know, nothing can stop me, just keep going. And then all of a sudden COVID comes, shuts down the economy, or then now there's a war, gas prices, prices of oil are going up to the sky. So many companies have left Russia, as it's unexpected things happen, like we're, we think we're controlling. You know, the demoniac civilization is really good at messing things up. Have you noticed? In the name of progress. We are so good. This, this is one of the biggest paradoxes. We're so good at messing things up. We figured out how to grow food that has no nutrition. So we grow food that has no nutrition, very good for the doctors, keeps them in business because we're all sick. I just heard today a devotee had developed a, a, this super fertilizer and he was growing parsnips. Parsnips are like carrots, this long and this wide. And similar squash, this long. And without refrigeration, because of the mineral content, the squash remained four months fresh. Hare Krishna. What do you think of that? And now, because of our advancement with fertilizers and modern farming techniques, totally destroying the soil of the planet. And the food that we're eating has very little value. Isn't it? Isn't that a paradox? You eat food that, that can't even maintain your life. Hare Krishna. The whole system is messed up. And now the vegans are saying, oh, you don't need the cow. The cow, the most valuable thing from the cow is a cow dung. 
can turn a desert into paradise. And yesterday I heard that there's a cow who never had a calf who's been giving milk for seven years. Like the vegans are like, no, all the milk's for the calf. You shouldn't drink it. Yeah, well, what about cows? There are lots of cows who get so much affection from their owners, they give milk. Who are they giving it to? They don't have any kids. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So our advancement, you know, it always ends up backwards because we think what happened hundreds of years ago is backwards. We have to do something better. That means we're backwards. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, hmm. This was the beginning of the end for Hiranyakashipu, but he was thinking, hey, you know, we're going to fight and we're going to win. Mm -hmm. So now, this is the moment the Lord has been waiting for, the fight. That's why he wanted Hiranyakashipu to come, so he could have a good fight. Hiranyakashipu mm. picks up his club, starts beating Lord Nishingade. You know, there was a, d a demon, his name was Dvid Vida. He was a gorilla. You know gorillas? <laughs> and so uh, Balaram was with his gopis and Dvid Vida was like making passes at Balaram's gopis and trying to pull off their clothes and pull off Balaram's clothes. So they had a fight. And Dvid Vida, you know, picks up his club and smashed Lord Balaram. Balaram just grabs it. Like, that didn't work, so he picks up a tree. Lord Balaram smashes it with his club. Whatever this Vidvita was trying to do, Balaram was like, smash, smash, smash. Then Vidvita was picking up like big boulders, throwing at Lord Balaram, smash with his club. You know, and... and the atheists, they don't use clubs to kill God, they use philosophy. But it's the same principle, right? Still trying to kill God, just a different weapon. <clears throat> so, hmm. so now, you may remember if you know this story, what happened. So, it's time for some drama. There's some drama here, right? So what's the drama? Well, you know, if, if you watch a Hollywood movie, let's say it's a Hollywood movie about a game or a boxing match or a war or something, then they always make these scenes where it looks like the hero is going to lose, right? It's like the half hour, be, a half a minute before the fight is over and he gets knocked out, you know? It's like, no, actually, there was one movie where the hero of the movie knocked out the fighter in the last round. He was losing the fight, he knocked him out. But the round ended before the count of 10 because you can only win if it's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. If he doesn't get up, you win. But the bell rung about six, so he actually lost the fight. You know? So they, they do things like that, dramatic, right? And Ram Lakshman, it looked like Lakshman was injured, was gonna die, and Hanuman had to go get the, the herbs to save him, you know, so there's like this tension, right? So now there's this tension, you know, like when Krishna was in the dance, you know, caught in the hoods of Kali, he was being squeezed and everybody thought, oh no, you know, so in any kind of drama or art form, music, there's tension. Dun, 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 dun. You know, they, they use that term in music. Go to this court, it creates tension. Go to this court, it resolves. It's resolved. But you have tension. So it's tension. When's it going to end? It's going, and I didn't expect it to go that way. You don't expect that Irani Kashipu is going to get anywhere. So Narendra Shingade is like, hey, let's have some fun. We'll make him think that he can actually defeat me. This will be fun. He's such a fool. We'll let him, you know, and everyone will look at this who's an atheist and think, oh, he's killing me. 
But Lord Nishingadev, of course, was in total control. He was just having fun. And so Prabhupada uses this as an analogy that sometimes Maya lets us think we're free. Oh, yeah, I'm free. I do whatever I want. And the next moment you get a toothache and you can't do anything other than think of the pain in your mouth. Sometimes Prabhupada was told that one so-called avatar incarnation had a toothache. And you know, he was supposed to give a lecture or something, but he couldn't because he had a toothache. And so Prabhupada was joking. So God has a toothache? So I don't think so. God does not have a toothache. Does he? Well, I mean, Krishna had a headache once, but that was a leela. He's not under the control of headaches. He has them when he wants them, if it serves a purpose. So anyway, but he, so sometimes Krishna lets us think, yeah, you, you got it together, you're in control. You know, you got, you got power, you got a good job, you got money, you're beautiful, you're smart. And then whack. That ever happened to you? Do you ever, do you ever think you had it together and then you got whacked? When you least expect it, you know? It does happen. There is the throwing potency of Maya. There's also, we can call it the whacking potency. It's one of the two potencies of Maya. You get whacked and covered, whacked around. And while you're getting whacked around, you're thinking, I'm completely free. And what could, what could be more? And so that's the covering potency. She whacks you in the face and you think, oh, do it again. It feels good. I have a little sore muscle there. Can you punch me here? Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. The next day you're all black and blue. So that's Maya's covering, whacking and covering. Uh, so Hiranyakashivu was thinking, oh, the Shringadev is afraid of me. Yeah, sure. So whenever Krishna is dealing with situations like this, and these demoniac people start thinking in crazy ways, he just laughs. Sometimes you see also a Balaram will laugh. So you know that story of Pondraka? Pondraka is an interesting story. Sounds like Pondraka had a bad childhood, you know? He's like, he was kind of like had low self-esteem or something, tried to make it up by putting forearms on, you know, gluing on forearms. But what actually happened was, this is so interesting and funny at the same time. Pondraka's friend said, you're Krishna, you're Krishna. They convinced him. This is a commentary of the Acharyas. They convinced him he was Krishna. Not really? You think I am? Yeah. Glue on, glue on two more arms. You're Vishnu. You know, get the, get the Sri Vatsa. Go to the costume jewelry store and get your $10 Sri Vatsa jewel, you know. Oh, okay. I got Sri Vatsa. I got four arms. Yeah, I'm Vishnu. Yeah. Take this guy to the local mental hospital. His, I don't know what his friends were thinking. They were having jo joking with him, whatever. So could you imagine your Krishna, four-armed Vishnu, and someone shows up and says to you, give up your symbols of false symbols of Vishnu. I'm the real Vishnu. Now, you think this is the funniest thing I ever heard. So Krishna was laughing. He said, sure, I'll give up the four symbols of Vishnu, especially the disc. I'll give that up to your neck. So, you know, sometimes young boys are like this, you know, that like, where they have this, what they call trash talk before a fight. So the boxers are wrestlers. Yeah, no, I'm going to kill this guy. You know, this guy's a wimp, you know, he'll be on the floor in three seconds, you know, so they have, so Krishna does that. That's why they do it, because it comes from him. So sometimes, you know, when they're boasting, Krishna says, yeah, that's how people talk when they're about to die. You know, or Krishna will say something like, yeah, people have power. They don't, they don't talk. They show it. So Krishna's having, so we, we heard 
of course, that Krishna wanted to fight and he arranged this Leela. So now we're seeing how he's enjoying it, you know, talking, trash talk and, you know, playing with and laughing at Aranyakashipu. It's great fun. Because Krishna is always enjoying, right? Um, uh, so now, Hiranyakashipu, nobody can kill him, not Indra, nor Indra, nobody can kill him, right? So he's like this, you know, I'm the greatest fighter, no, undefeated, a hundred fights, nobody, you know, see boxers are like that, I'm undefeatable, Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest, he always used to say, I'm the greatest, nobody can defeat me. So Hiranyakashipu is like world heavyweight championship boxer. He's never been defeated. Nobody can defeat him. And he's like, this Jinganev, this lion man, he can't defeat me. Yeah, right. Um, so Lord Jinganev says, well, okay, you think that way? Rah! He grabs him. Um, Puts him on his lap, uh, what we call what we can now call the operating table, um, and began the operation. And as you may recall, the operating scalpel was his nails, Tavakara Kamala. You have lotus hands and you have these nails. And this very, you have this very wonderful form and you have these lotus like hands but they have nails which are like chisels that chiseled the hard chest of Hiranyakashipu. So those are the operating instruments. So um, that was quite a shock for Hiranyakashipu. He didn't really have much time to think because it kind of, you know, once Nishingadev stopped playing with him, it was just one, two, three. Operation is success. As Bart Bale said, the patient died. Yeah, that's the... That's the mantra for Lord Nishingadev. I like that. We're gonna have a we have a t-shirt with a picture of Lord Nishingadev. And it'll say, the operation was a success, the patient died. <laughs> the picture of Nishingadev doing his operation. That can be the name of today's class. Hare Krishna. Okay. Um, now, um, it's said here, this is verse 30, Lord Nishingadev's body is covered with blood and he was so angry, you couldn't look at his eyes, they were too fearful. And he had a special garland, who knows what garland he wore was? You remember? He had a garland of the intestines. Yeah. So Lord Nishingde is like, um, I don't know, maybe kind of showing off, right? Hey, hey. Uh, this one demoniac king once killed a queen, chopped her head off, and walked around her kingdom with the head in his hand, just like. Wow, amazing, huh? It's like hard to imagine things people would do. But Lord Nishingadev is kind of walking around like that. Hey, you know, we don't just wear any garland. We wear the garland of this demon, his intestines. Kind of like a prize, right, for winning? Uh -huh. So then what happened? Mm. Rani Kashipu has an army. And you remember um, when Krishna fought Shanura and Mustika after he killed them? All their friends came. That was bad. bad they made a bad decision. They tried, you know, like you killed, you killed our friend or our brother or our cousin or our uncle. That's it. Uh, bad choice. Krishna and Balaram finished them. 
And then, so this is what happened. Uh, Hiranyakashi was killed, so his army comes. That was a bad move. What did Krishna do? Yeah. He killed all of them in the same way, with his nails. Those are some powerful nails. Now you're thinking, how did he kill a whole army with nails? And the answer is, you can't imagine. Someday you will understand. That's sometimes Prabhupada would say, someday you'll understand. Um, um, so it's all over and everybody's dead and everything is disrupted. It's like everything is like, oh, the earth is shaking. And Lord Nishimadev, he's so bright that every, every other bright thing on the earth is not bright. <clears throat> the point is, he's angry, still angry. So now what? Mm -hmm. He was like, next! Who's next? I'm ready for the next one. But there was nobody to fight. It's like, oh man. Fun's over. Mm. So now everybody's seeing how angry here in uh, Lord Nishigadev is. So they're like, we have to, instead of thinking, we have to pacify him. Um, of course, they were happy. They were happy that, that Hiranyakashipu was killed, but like you know, they were celebrating and music and dancing, playing instruments and so on. But um, still, they wanted to pacify the Lord. So Lord Brahma comes up and he offers prayers. And a lot of philosophy in his prayers. And Lord Shiva came up said, you know, it's not time for your anger, so the universe is not ready to be destroyed yet. Um, Prahlad, yeah, Prahlad's here, you know, it's like, let's, let's calm down now. Indra came, he tried. Mm. He glorified, didn't work then. The sadhus, the saintly persons came, glorified him, didn't work. Then the Pabinus of Petri Loka, they came. They described, you know, described what happened, glorified Lord Nishingade, that didn't work. Then the habits of Siddha Loka, um, you know, you're wonderful, you're powerful, you killed Hiranyakashipu, all glories to you. That didn't work. The Vidyadars, these are different demigods. Um, glorifying him, you're so powerful. You conquered, Lord Nishinga, uh, um, you've conquered Hiranyakashipu. We pay obeisances to you. The Nagaloka, these are snakes, planet of snakes. Um, we, they offer their respects. Then you have the Manus, they offer their respects. Then the Prajapadis, they offer their respects. The Gandharvas, they offer their respects. Then you have the Charnas from another planet, the Yakshas from another planet. Um, the Kim Purushas, they're all inhabitants of different planets. And then. You have Vitalika Loka. I don't know what that is. They offered prayers, the Kinars. I think the Kinars are monkeys, right? Kim Purusha. And then associates of Vishnu offered prayers. And even that didn't work. So what what's next? Um this takes us into the next chapter. You know what happens next, but I'm going to wait and see if you have any questions. Because <clears throat> we got through that chapter. We're almost finished with the story and we're like three weeks away.
then we could get into more um we could get off on a lot of there's a lot of tangential information about Lord Nishingadev stories, modern and ancient, that would be interesting. You want to go to Hovalam? You have to climb up different mountains and you can go to nine temples. <clears throat> Should we do a pilgrimage there to Hovalam? We can visit all nine temples of Nishingadev. A lot of these places, there's no trails. You have to just make your own trail. I was just talking to a devotee yesterday and he says he goes out backpacking and there's no trails. He just goes out. He said, it's amazing. So sattvic said, you don't have to control your mind because it's only sattvic. So we could go to a hovalam. Canars are celestial musicians, part human, part bird. Oh. Oh. Hmm. 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 So maybe someday we'll go. Climb the mountains of a hovalam. Are you into it? Get your hiking shoes on, get in shape, and then we'll go. I think you can visit all the temples in one day. Hare Krishna. Okay, let's see if you have any questions. Comment, yes. Comment, okay. Comment, yes. Comment, sorry. Uh, we have a cow like this in Lithuania where the brahmacharis live, yeah. You give a cow love and you get um, milk. Canars in India are called transgender. Oh, okay. And if you don't give transgender Men dressed in saris, donations, they, people think they're going to curse you and something bad's going to happen. Right? Is that true, Kavita? So whenever you see a guy dressed up like a sari, begging, everybody gives money. Yes, Maharaj. Is that true? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Guys dressed up like women. And they go... We're always on the train from um, Calcutta to Puri. I know that. But they never stopped devotees because I don't think devotees ever gave them money. So they realize devotees are not good clients because devotees don't believe. You know, the devotees don't think, oh, if I don't give a, give him a donation, you know, something bad's going to happen. They don't believe that. So, <laughs> But other people do, right? What do you do for a living? I dress up like a woman and collect donations. Okay. Hare Krishna. It works for some, I guess. Okay. So, um, um, so now you have Lord Nishengadev really angry, and um, demigods are trying to figure out. What to do? Kya he? What to do? And um, they thought, we'll ask the goddess Lakshmi. But she was afraid to go. She was afraid of that form. So I can't go. I've never seen a form like this. I'm afraid. So then it was Lord Brahma's idea. You know the saying, two heads are better than one? Well, in our universe, Lord Brahma has four. In other universes, if the universes are bigger, he has more heads so he can take care of everything. So Lord Brahma is uh, highly intelligent. And so he figured, he was thinking, Prahlad is so dear to Lord Nishingadev. And he came to protect you, so you are the one who can pacify. You are the only one. That's interesting, isn't it? That no, you know, well, it shows that 
one thing it shows that Prahlad's love is greater than the love of the others who try to pass the other demigods. And so, because of that love and affection, Jingadeva was pacified. And Krishna is pacified by love. Krishna is a love addict. He's addicted to love. Did you know that? If you love Krishna, he'll become addicted to you. He, he'll, if you love Krishna, he will not be able to not think of you. If you love Krishna, he'll always think of you because he's addicted to love and he's addicted to the people who love him. And so in the presence of Prahlad, he couldn't be angry because Prahlad loves him so much, right? It's like, you know, you could be really, really, really angry. Like, ah. Oh. And, and then you have a little child and comes up. Go, 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 go. And it's like, you can't be angry anymore. That's like, isn't it? It's like, how can you be angry? Daddy, will you take me to this? <laughs> And you feel like telling him again, you go bury yourself, I don't want to see you, but you can't. Can we go, can you promise me we do this? Passive, and love, the love. Oh, daddy, I love you. Can we go here? So gradually you become pacified, right? So that's what happened. Um, so Prahlad goes up, pays obeisances. Lord Nishingade puts his hand on his head. And in a lecture, Prabhupada said, why did Hiranyakashipu come? And everyone thinks, oh, he came to kill Hiranyakashipu. Or, and Prabhupada said, no. He came to put his hand on Prahlad's head. He came to bless Prahlad, that's why, because you know, Krishna killing demons, it's not like that's not like his reason. It's not his mode mode MO or reason data. It's not the reason he exists is not to kill demons. That's like side fun, you know? It's like you're going somewhere and you stop and look at a cow. You didn't go, you're not going to look at cows, you're going somewhere else. So Krishna has fun killing the demons, but his main purpose in coming was to touch Prahlad's head, bless him. Because it's all about love. And why this is so important is because if we just understand that the whole point of our existence is only about love, it's only about loving Krishna, that's all it's about. That's all we have to do. Life is not complicated. You just have to learn how to love Krishna. That's all you have to think about. How can I love Krishna? Then, then it means you've understood Krishna. You understood Krishna consciousness. When you get that point, it might take you 50 years to get to that point. And that point is so simple, but that's the point. I'm like, oh, okay, I think I'm getting it. You mean, I'm not supposed to be thinking about myself supposed to be thinking about how to love Krishna. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. You got it. Hmm, you mean, I'm not supposed to be thinking about sense gratification? You mean, I'm not supposed to be thinking about what I want? Yeah, you got it. You mean, like, Krishna loves me? And I'm supposed to love him? Yeah, you got it. That's it. That is the whole purpose of this creation. That's why you were created, to love Krishna. You were not created to eat pizza and ice cream. Believe me, that's not why you were created. You were not created to go to the movies. You were not created to compete with Bill Gates to become one of the richest men or women. You were created to love Krishna. We think we were created for all these other reasons, to become number one of this. Isn't it? The most this, the most that the best this, the best that. That is not why you were created. You weren't created to enjoy this, see this, hear this, taste this, smell this, do this. You were created to love Krishna. That's it. It's so simple. We have, we have 80 books just to explain that. It takes us 80 books. We have to read 80 books to get that one point. This Kali Yuga, we're dull. 
But that's the point. When you get that point, you just chant. You don't need the books. I mean, you can read them. It's good for you. But you don't need them anymore because now you love Krishna. You know, you, you put an address on your Google map, right? And you get to the place. And then, you know, the map's like, you have arrived. Beep, 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 beep. You know, and your friend says, why don't you turn it off? We've arrived. You know, like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I guess I don't need it anymore. So when you arrive at Love of Godhead, it's like, okay, you can turn off your GPS. You, just, you got it. That's it. There's like, there's nothing more you need to know. And that's all just details. You know, you can know it. It's all relishable now. But you know it now just to add whipped cream to the sweet. But you have the sweet. That's the idea. So here, ladies and gentlemen, here you see it live and in color. Lord Nishringadev cannot be pacified until there's someone who actually deeply loves him. And then he comes down. And that's why he came to get that love and reciprocate with the love. Of course, you say, but we read, we read last week that he came because he wanted to fight. Yeah, but that's just an excuse. He really, he really wanted to inspire Prahlad and inspire all of us. So he did this Leela. Uh, hmm. So now, you know what happens when Krishna touches your head? Has that ever happened to you that he touched your head? Because when he does, you begin to recite prayers in Sanskrit. Did you know that? And you know what it's like to recite a prayer in Sanskrit? Like perfectly? Just recite it, perfect Sanskrit, verse after verse after verse, coming off the press like newspapers. You know, you remember the story of Dhruva? Krishna touched his head, Vishnu with a conch shell. The verses started flying out of his mouth, perfect Sanskrit. One wonders if they even knew how to speak Sanskrit. Probably that was the dominant language. But even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't, didn't matter, because once you get touched with the conch, it just flows, you know, boom. And you speak it all perfectly. So that's what's happening here. Prahlad is how old in this? So he's five or six now. And Sanskrit verses are rolling off his tongue like nectar flowing down a river just by the touch of Krishna. You can pray like that. Maybe when you chant sometime, you can pray, Krishna, please touch my head so that the nectar of your name will continually flow out of my tongue. So, um, so now, but it's, what's interesting also, this is so, this is so cool. You've probably wondered about this before. You, you go to a chapter in the Bhagavatam and it'll have prayers and then there'll be these long purports where Prabhupada's explaining the prayers and you're like looking at the prayers and thinking, hmm, you know, in my world, prayers are not like second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Prayers are like, you know, please help me with this and that, right? Prayers are not like philosophical treatises, but you'll see in many places in the Bhagavatam, the prayers, uh, and there it is. How to learn perfect Sanskrit? Get Krishna to touch your head. Yeah, save a lot of time. Otherwise, it takes 12 years. So, have you ever read the Bhagavatam? And, you know, it's like there's this dramatic scene, and you know, Nishringadev is like full of blood, and his eyes are red. Rah! Nobody can pacify him. You know, for an hour, nobody can pacify him with their prayers. Then Prahlad comes and he comes down. And then Prahlad starts offering prayers, which you would think be, would be like, not exactly the way they came out. It's like now a whole philosophy. He's talking about brahminical qualities and it's like, what's going on here? This is all Krishna's arrangement to express philosophy. Because 
we're so bored with philosophy and dull. We need some like exciting stories and then we can slip the philosophy in, right? Isn't it? So, you know, it's like, you know, it's a blockbuster, Lord and Schengen blockbuster. And then, okay, now we have the blockbuster. We're going to throw in some philosophy for all you dull headed people, you know, so you can learn something. Isn't it? So you'll find throughout Bhagavatam, there's like philosophy is coming out in the form of prayers, like deep philosophy. So that's what's happening now. Um, so Prahlad's saying, you know, it doesn't matter. You have this quality, you beautiful, good family, wealth, education, austerity, sense control, physical strength, diligence, intelligence, yogic power, but you can't satisfy Krishna only by devotional service. So that's like, that's where he's starting. Um, Well, he started by saying, I'm not qualified to offer prayers, but we know that's not true because he got touched on the head. So he begins by saying, you know, no material qualification. We've talked about this a million and one times because we still think we need material qualification to please Krishna. It's the most ridiculous idea that was ever created in the human mind. Like you're going to please Krishna who has unlimited qualities, unlimited wealth, unlimited beauty, unlimited intelligence. You need to be intelligent to please him and beautiful. Our intelligence, beauty, wealth, like it doesn't rate on his chart. It doesn't exist. It doesn't even show up as 0. 0.00001. And we're thinking, oh, I'm so stupid, Krishna doesn't like me. Um, I'm so ugly, Krishna doesn't like me. I'm so fat, Krishna doesn't like me. Like Krishna cares, like Krishna's attracted to a material body. No, he's not. Krishna is attracted to you because you're so smart, because you have a high IQ. No, his IQ is unlimited greater, unlimitedly greater than yours. So your IQ, even if it's 205, doesn't impress him, might impress other people. So because we can impress people with our qualities, we think we can impress him. That's a huge mistake. And so Prahlad Mars is confirming that here in this verse, that, you know, that doesn't work. But by bhakti, service, I can satisfy him. Okay. Um, then he's saying, it's, it's a verse which is quoted, not this verse, but similar verses are quoted elsewhere. Then you can have this horrible background. And you're if you become a devotee, you're better off than someone who's born as a, uh, in a Brahmin family. Um, so, you know, Brahmin is pretty high qualification in the material world. But better be born in a low family, but in a family uh, and become a devotee. That's better than being a born a Brahmin and not being a devotee. So he's kind of elaborating on that principle here, or that philosophy. Uh, mm, mm. So then he goes on, this is so nice, this section, then he goes on to say, okay, you're going to offer something to Krishna. Okay, question number one, does he need it? No, does he need your offering? What are you going to offer, bananas and strawberries? Oh, I got the best bananas in Mayapur. And the best strawberries, great. You think that's going to satisfy Krishna? Like he doesn't get good bananas and strawberries like where he lives? I think he gets better ones, right? So Prahlad is elaborating on this. Like what you offer to Krishna, even if it's pure gold, 24 carat, if there is more carats, 25, 26, like that's going to impress Krishna. Like the whole spiritual world is made of jewels. Like they don't even need lights. It's just the jewels lighted up. And you're like, hey, Krishna, here's a diamond ring, you know? Make me a pure devotee. It doesn't work like that. It's like you can't impress him that way. So <clears throat> if we can't impress Krishna with something material, then it also follows, if we don't have something material, that doesn't matter because that's not what impresses him. Correct? And if you need something material to impress Krishna, 
I would I would suggest suicide because I don't think there would be any other reason to live because now you can't please Krishna, so why live? As Prabhupada said, the whole point is to please Krishna. So, so if you need material qualification to please Krishna, definitely you should kill yourself because you're, you, you, your life is totally wasted and useless. And why, why bother occupying space and breathing oxygen and eating food? You just let other people do it. You can die. <clears throat> but that is not how we think. Because we know Krishna eats love, right? That's what he eats. That's what he thrives on. And so do we. So it should be no surprise that he does. Okay. Um, so now he says, um, even though I was born in a demoniac family, I'm going to offer my prayers to you. It's okay. It will purify me. I can do this. You're going to allow me to do this. All right. Raise your hand if you were born in a demoniac family. Okay. Keep your hand up if your parents were as demoniac as Hiranyakashipu. Okay, we don't have anyone that demoniac. All right. So uh, we're all in a better position than Pallad Maharaj. Okay, I just wanted to demonstrate that. And he, he, it turned out pretty good for him, right? So there's hope. We have good prospects, right? Um, yeah. And then Prahlad Maharaj says, you know, it's just affirming that you've come to protect your devotees. So, you know, I say, does Krishna protect his devotees? Well, this form of Lord Nishingadev is the form in which Krishna comes to protect his devotees. That's the form that he is, the, you know, for your average Hindu, it's Ganesh. You go to Ganesh. Ganesh will bless you, he'll remove obstacles for devotees. We're not praying for removal of material obstacles, spiritual obstacles. So it's Lord Nishingadev. He removes obstacles. He's our Ganesh, so to speak. And he is the one we go to, to for protection. So we were saying the other day that you generally, you don't go to Radha and Krishna for protection. You go to Radha and Krishna for Leela. But sometimes we need protection. Sometimes we need strength. We need protection to preach. The, there's antagonistic forces working against us. So we pray to Lord Nishinani, please help. Please protect us. Yes, I was, when I was leaving India, I was chanting in the Shringa mantra because I thought they were going to say, you can't leave. <clears throat> so that was like natural. And then my wife would go off and I'm stuck in India <clears throat> for the next for the, till the end of Kali Yuga or something, because they won't let me out. India is interesting. But anyway, everything worked out. But I was praying, you know. I mean, I was half praying, because I actually wanted to stay in India. But my visa ran out. But if they hold me at the airport, then I can't leave. So I was thinking, any way you roll the dice, it's going to be good. They keep me or I go, you know, got service. But if they want to keep me, then they'll just fine with me. I'll go back to Vrindavan. <clears throat> but anyway, I thought it was my duty to pray to Lord Nishingadev to uh, go back because we have this retreat coming up in a couple of days and you know, I should be back to do it. So. And then in a couple of weeks, there's another... <clears throat> my birthday celebration, you're all invited. You can fly from anywhere in the world. Rasa Manjari's got room for six people at her house. First come, first serve. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Okay. Um, hmm. So now, this is a beautiful verse, some beautiful verses. Some are more well-known than others. Prahlad's saying, He's going down the list of all these fearful things that could happen to you. He says, I'm not actually afraid. Well, not, not excuse me. He's describing Lord Nishringadev's form. It's very fearful. And he's saying, I'm not afraid of all these fearful things. Um, um, he said, no, by, by your form, when your form is here, then I'm not afraid of anything. 
because I know you'll protect me. And then um, what I'm afraid of is Maya. Um, mm. So this is this is the idea. You know, we say a devotee's fearless, okay, but you should be afraid of Maya, right? Lord Nishringadev, you're fearful. I don't fear you. You protect me. I fear Maya. Everyone should have a healthy fear. At least, you know, when you play with fire, when you're cooking, you got to be a little bit careful. Otherwise, you'll get burned. So it's like that. A little cautious. And the greatest fear for us is we'll forget Krishna and we'll run after Maya. Isn't it? Isn't that your greatest fear? That you would do something stupid? Oh, Krishna, please don't let me do anything stupid. I have capacity to do many stupid things. I've done many in the past and I could do many in the future. Please don't let me do it. A healthy fear. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, if you're not afraid of Maya, you should be. In a healthy way. Don't go thinking about, oh, Maya, Maya's going to get me. As soon as you walk out the street, where is she? Where is she? Not like that. Like we're not meditating on, when am I going to fall into Maya? Is it going to be in the next five minutes? It's not like that. But Prabhupada said, there, you know, we, you should understand the power of it. When um, a great devotee has difficulty, you sometimes you'll read in Bhagavatam or even hear about contemporary devotees that have difficulties. And then you're thinking, well, if they had difficulty, what about me? You know, how, how could you expect me? This person was more Krishna conscious. So Prabhupada said, you should think if that person had difficulty, how careful I must be, because I'm weaker. Right? So that's it. And so instead of thinking, I might as well give up because what's the use? They couldn't even do it. You're supposed to think, I have to try harder because even they couldn't do it. And that's the idea. So there's a healthy fear there. Okay. So I'm going to go to chat and see if there's some something. This is off topic from Vilma. How to prepare for private dining if you will only have one room. Oh, this is all personal. It doesn't relate to anybody. The answer to the question is go to your heart. Do what feels do what feels right. Or you can follow Prabhupada's footsteps and say, Guru Maharaj, how can I serve you? How to learn perfect Sanskrit, make Krishna touch your head. Okay, well now. Tanya, how do you get Krishna to touch your head? That's the next question. I know how to do it. You dress the deities. And then you hug the deity and you put your head right under Krishna's hand and see if it works. And report back tomorrow. Report back on, what's today, Wednesday? Report back on Friday with your results. Well, all you have to do is start chanting shlokas and we'll know it worked. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we have a few minutes. Um, mm. So, Prahlad is saying, I'm afraid of Maya. When will you give me shelter at your lotus feet? <clears throat> shelter, what is, when a devotee is saying, when will you give me shelter at your lotus feet? It means <clears throat> only you. You and nothing else, only pure bhakti, that's all I want. When will that day come when I just, there's nothing else in my head, nothing in my heart but pure bhakti. That's what I want. That's, that is the, that is meant to be the desire of every devotee. If you have that desire, then you've understood Krishna consciousness. And also, when can I give every living entity in the universe Krishna bhakti? When will I get it? When can I? So both those things, that's. And then if you're always thinking like that, you're good. You, you'll be fine. Nothing to worry about. You will have nothing to worry about. Of course, as I often say, if you like to worry, you'll think of something to worry about. But you don't have to. 
that's a joke. But it's it's a joke, but it's true. That's the thing. That joke is true. You have Krishna says, don't worry, and you say, Yeah, but if I don't worry, I'll worry, then I'm not worried. So I have to worry about something. No, you don't really. But if you want to worry, then worry about not being Krishna conscious, have a healthy fear. That's very good. Because if you have a healthy fear, you probably will protect yourself. That's, that's the way you do it. Okay. Mm. 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 Oh yeah, so now here's, here's another verse. You may have heard this verse before. It's a good chapter philosophically. He is a prod in this verse. This is text 17, chapter 9. He's saying, basically he's saying, you know, in the material world, there's so many remedies for all the problems we have, and all the remedies are worse than the cure, They're worse than the disease, you know. Try to make something better. If you don't know what you're doing, just makes it worse. I was listening to a video, a, a daily video that I made like six years ago. And, and basically I was saying, if you think you're so smart, how is it you're still in the material world? You know, it didn't seem to work. You're, you know, it's like, how's it working for you? Using your intelligence only without guidance from higher authority. So, uh, yeah, yeah. If if you only use your intelligence, then eventually, in the name of solution, you'll create more problems. It's just how it works, right? Been in the material world for a zillion years using my intelligence. How's that working out? Not so good. Hare Krishna. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, or should I say, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen. Hare Krishna. We're going to end now because we're just a few minutes away. Oh, maybe we have another comment. If I see Maya as a person, I'm feeling sorry for her. Everyone blaming her for bad choices. <laughs> yeah, Prabhupada said Maya's seva is a thankless task. But it's but she understands it's service to Krishna. Maya is Radha in, in her external form. So eventually Maya will bring you to Radha. And so she has her per, you know, but we were in Mayapur at Simant her temple. And it's a form of Parvati who got the Lord Chaitanya put this, the red in her part. And she was telling him, you know, like, I got a bad deal, you know, like you're coming and liberating everyone and my services keep everyone in Maya. It's like, you need to give me mercy. So she got mercy from Gorunga in that spot. But it's true, you know, it's like kind of a bad deal, right? I imagine Prabhupada told you, so your service is keep everyone in Maya. Go out on the street and tell everyone to enjoy and facilitate it. How would you feel? Not so good, right? Okay, so why don't we end class here? We can stop the recording and the live.